All right, folks, meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Thanks for logging on here to our uh, YouTube videos. Winter storm watch now posted for uh, really the almost all of the uh, lower half of Southern Indiana along the Ohio River. Winter storm warnings to the north. Uh, now, the difference between a watch and a warning is, of course, uh, the Weather Service is confident that the winter weather event will happen, and so they issue a warning. And the less confidence they issue a watch and then upgrade to a warning as it gets closer whenever they see a little bit more with that. I do believe that we're going to see an upgrade to some warnings tomorrow based on the latest data that's trending in. And if this trends in overnight, it's certainly going to be that. Uh, but just pretty much expect that everywhere tomorrow is going to be under some form of winter, uh, winter storm warning, uh, most likely at this point. All right, tonight's video, again, sponsored by High Voltage Mobile DJ Services. Visit them on the web at djhighvoltage.com. You can... Uh, check them out. You can see exactly what they've got. They've got a great mobile stage that you can check out, and uh, they've got some pictures on this site as well that can give you an idea of what they can do. You can contact Nathan at 630-9465 and tell them Southern Indiana Weather sent you. They do a great job, so check them out if you're in need for a DJ. Okay, folks, as I said, we are in for an absolute mess on our hand. I want to start out with future radar tonight just to give you an idea of when this is going to move through. And then we'll talk about precipitation type and, and what to expect from there out. Okay, So here we are. Uh, this was this afternoon. Here we go into tonight. This was the model run, by the way, that initialized at 1 this afternoon. Uh, here we are at early tomorrow morning by 11 a.m. And you see some of the leading edge of the precipitation starting uh, to spill into southern Illinois. The big bulk of it still here over in Arkansas and, and moving our way. By the time noon, 1 o'clock hits, you start to have a few things mixed into Indiana. Now, this first blue line that you see right here is the 32-degree line. So this is the freezing line. Anything that falls north of that is going to be then in the form of snow up here in northern Indiana, especially. especially excuse me. And then very quickly, watch how it overtakes our area by 2 o'clock. Then you got 3 o'clock. Now, uh, according to this, we are above freezing. Now, the NAM has been trending on the warmer side. It has a warm bias oftentimes anyway. When I show you the GFS, the GFS is actually trending on the colder side. I'm tending to side a little bit more towards the GFS on this. I, I think the warm, I think it's just a bit too warm given the conditions that we're going to have on the NAM, but we'll take it as it sees, it sees it and just show you what it does. Regardless, you can get an idea very quickly by uh, about uh, five o'clock at night. That freezing line is well uh, below us anyway. So even with the NAM, it does start out as a little bit of rain for us here in southern Indiana with snow to the north and then very quickly changes over to an icy mess and into snow after that. And then you see these heavier shades of, uh, of uh, pink and purple move in here. And then this is just a heavy, heavy, heavy wintry mess. Finally, by the time you go into the overnight hours on Wednesday, it's gone. All right. So that's the way future radar sees things. Let's talk about precipitation type. First, let's go to the NAM and talk about precipitation type, uh, the high kilometer, the four res high resolution four kilometer NAM. That's the future radar I was showing you. Let's talk about precipitation type with it first, and then we'll get into the GFS. Here we are at about four o'clock in the afternoon, and you see uh, the precipitation type is moving in here. It's got us as mostly snow over uh, uh, over portions of southern Indiana at this point. And even with uh, temperatures above freezing, some of it wouldn't stick right away. You've got a very narrow band of ice, but then very quickly you see uh, some more ice potentially uh, accumulating in with this. And then, of course, during the overnight hours, it's gone. Let's talk about the GFS. The GFS is much more aggressive with the ice accumulation than than what the NAM model is. As I said, the NAM is a little bit warmer with its solution, and uh, so it just gives us sort of a, a heavier wet snow. Now, uh, we'll. I'll, I'll take the snow over the ice, but uh, you know, I'll show you that uh, it's looking like we're going to get snow on, on the back side of this no matter what. All right, so here we are. Let me back this up so that we can actually see the event. We're here at Tuesday at 7 in the morning. Uh, no problems at all tomorrow morning, so if you're headed to the work on your morning commute, it'll be just fine. The problems will come after that, all right? Here we are by 1 p.m., and you're starting to see that leading edge of the accumulation move up towards us. Again, this is precipitation type, not... Uh, not uh, future radar, but this will indicate what type of precipitation we can expect. Sometime between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m., you see that it overtakes our area. And so early afternoon, is uh, because this has moved so far, I say 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the GFS starts to have it spilling into our area. All snow event to our north. Notice it's mixing in a lot of orange here in southern Indiana. That's a sleet. Uh, the pink is the freezing rain, and of course the green is all rain. 32 degree line well to our south. 
uh, by this point. In fact, the 32 line degree line stays well to our south all day long. We, it, it tanks our temperatures tomorrow, um, so uh, very rapidly as this moves in. And then you see some of that light uh, pink coming in here. Again, this is uh, freezing rain mixing in, and then on the back side of it as it exits out, snow. And then, of course, it's all gone by 1 in the afternoon on Wednesday with the GFS model. So if this verifies, and I, I think this is a reasonable solution, um, this is going to be an absolute wintry mess. And I think this is reasonable. The track of the low, uh, basically, it's sort of tracking it up right like this along the spine of the Appalachian Mountains. I said, um, I've said in some of my updates before how uh, low pressures like to track along the edge of a snowpack. We've got a pretty heavy snowpack in Kentucky down here. So I think this is pretty reasonable. Uh, it definitely has some meteorological merit to it. Sometimes you just look at a model and you scratch your head and you're like, there ain't no way that's happening. Just the science of understanding the science of meteorology, you're like, there ain't no way that's going to happen. Uh, but I don't see that with this one. It seems like a pretty reasonable solution. And so we'll... It, Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't a reasonable solution. I don't want the ice. I don't think anybody wants the ice. It's not a pretty picture, folks, but it's something that we need to prepare for. All right. Temperature wise with this is going to be critical to everything. We start off in the mid 20s here very quickly. We warm up only to about 31 tomorrow, according to the GFS. Some of us might hit just a tad bit above freezing, but not very far. We aren't going to make it to the mid 30s tomorrow like some of the other models are showing, or at least according to this model. Some of the models are a more warmer solution with 35 and even closer to 40 towards uh, portions of far extreme southern Indiana. I'm not buying that at all. I think this is going to be a colder solution uh, with a low tracking more along like this. It's going to be pulling that cold air down into us and with that heavier snowpack over Kentucky that's going to affect our temperatures. We should start to fall and here we are around 31 degrees in southwest Indiana at 1 in the afternoon. Notice we take it to 7 p.m. We're down into the 20s. So once the heavy precipitation starts it's, it's going to Drop, drop us below freezing pretty fast no matter what. So that's something we're going to have to deal with. Let's talk about how much we can expect. Ice accumulations. A little bit of sleet accumulations according to the GFS. Uh, pretty much a, a potential of a large bit of uh, freezing rain accumulations. In fact, uh, up to maybe a quarter of an inch of freezing rain accumulation possible for some of us. Uh, and that's not good. Let's talk about what can we can expect as snow because as you noticed on the precipitation type, it went to the icy mix, but then it went to snow on the back side of that after that icy mix is out. And GFS gives us a fairly good, healthy dose of snow. So here we have, uh, remember the GFS is taking a lot of the, the freezing precipitation and moving it further south down to here. It had been placing it further south, further north up into our area. So it, it's going to go back and forth, but regardless, we're going to get some ice with this the way things look. Uh, and, and the GFS is actually pretty heavy on its totals during the latest runs. Here we've got 5.9 inches in Evansville, 5.2 here in the Dubois County area, 5.3 up in Bloomington, 4.1 up in Vincennes. And these purple colors actually start the 6-inch mark. It looks like we maybe have some 7-inch marks dotted in here as well. So 7-inch marks potentially in here as well. And that's, uh, you know, that that's for a uh, potential of sleet and freezing rain. And then with this, that's pretty impressive. Will that verify? I'm not 100% sold on this solution just yet, but I certainly think um, that we're going to have some decent snows out of this the way it's looking. Even the high resolution NAM, it's actually going off the charts crazy with this. Uh, take this with a grain of salt, especially more so than the GFS. Um, uh, the, the NAM oftentimes wants to go what we call in, in, in the business QPF crazy. QPF, quantity of precipitation forecast, is just the amount of liquid precipitation that's out there. Then you take that, combine it with the temperatures, and you convert it to a snow total. Uh, basically, it's just going precipitation crazy. And uh, I'm not sure that we're going to see 9 and 10 inches here in southern Indiana. I could buy that for northern Indiana. But with some of the sleet and additional totals mixing in, I'm not sure that we're going to see these heavier snows down here. But again, this is one model. It's guidance. We'll consider it. The Canadian model doesn't show it quite that heavy down in here, and of course, neither did the GFS. The GFS showed some pretty heavier snow totals, but we're talking 6 to 8 inches. We're not talking uh, anywhere from 6 in, to 8 in here, and then uh, from uh, you know 10 to 12 inches over in here. I'm having a hard time believing that this swath could verify. I'm not saying it's going to be completely ruled out, but uh, I think those will stay heavier t totals towards the north. It seems more reasonable to have a 6 to 8 in there than it does... Uh, 8 to 10, given the fact that we'll have some icy mix, miss, mess mixing in. Canadian, let me show you this real quickly as well, and it is very similar, except that it has a very sharp cutoff to that. 
the Canadian uh, basically takes the uh, that rain line up a little bit more north than what some of the other models do and so uh, that cuts off on our snow totals but really remember the first blue starts at two inches so you've got anywhere from two inches down here up to six inches by the time you get up in this first purple shade even up to eight plus inches by the time you get up towards Indianapolis with this so regardless somebody's going to get hammered with some big time snows out of this and I certainly believe that there could be some places that get locally a foot out of this towards uh, central and northern Indiana I, I don't think it's going to be here in southern Indiana at this point um, but we'll just have to sort of wait and see all right now earlier this afternoon I posted this during the lunch hour this was my first call for totals and you notice this is significant less than what the models are showing now so this this will need to be revised. Uh, I was thinking about one to two inches of snow because of the uh, up to the quarter inch of uh, sleet and freezing rain mixing in here. That usually eats at our totals. The model guidance as of late has been uh, to add another uh, several inches to that. And so really uh, this one to two inch swath may end up being more like a two to four inch swath along. Uh, and, and then maybe a four to a six inch swath and six to a foot up in here. I'm not 100% sure how I'll go with this yet. I'm not planning to update the snow totals map tonight or at least not yet anyways. The, it's uh, 7.40 p.m. right now as I'm recording this. Uh, our evening models initialize at 7 p.m. I'm gonna wait for those to roll in and then probably sometime after 10 or 11 o'clock tonight I may have another snow map put out. May also just go ahead and wait until the morning to put one out where I can be a little bit more accurate as well. Uh, but uh, I think this definitely gives you an idea uh, still pretty accurate on placement of sleet and freezing rain and some sleet still possible even in this swath. But basically, for the most part, the way it is now, I, I think we're going to have a little bit heavier totals with this. We'll have to see, um, you know, in, in general, if if I could just go back here, let me uh, let me go down into here and uh, just, just very quickly, we'll turn off uh, the METAR stations here. Maybe I can just annotate this r really quickly. I think this might be the best way to do it. Uh, based on the trends today, I would say this area uh, may have a, a good possibility of getting two to five inches and then I would annotate an area north of that uh, like this that um, would possibly uh, get maybe four or five inches uh, to even up to seven or eight inches and then uh, we could go beyond that up into here where you could even go at eight to twelve inches uh, that's the way the model guidance is trending at this point now Will that be exactly what happens or not? I don't know. Again, I don't particularly want to issue a new snowfall forecast yet. I'd rather wait since the models are processing now and then give that a little bit to see. But if we can get some model agreement, in other words, this GFS is uh, significantly higher than what it was showing earlier. If we can get continued model agreement with the evening runs that the, that the threat is increasing for heavier snow, then I'll, I'll adjust my totals accordingly after that. But I'd rather see those first. All right. Regardless, no matter what, it looks like we're underneath of a pretty significant threat for some icing and, and uh, some snow on top of the ice. So what's not to love about that, right? Oh, folks, travel is going to be a mess. I'll just put it this way. If you can avoid travel on Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday, just avoid it and stay home if you can. Uh, it, I know for those of us that work, it, it may just end up being a rough commute on the way home. Keep it right here to Southern Indiana weather. We'll have more updates. Right now for tomorrow, again, it's that cloudy with a wintry mix of sleet, freezing rain, and snow. Again, probably after 1 in the afternoon, changing to all snow overnight, and some of that snow could end up being pretty heavy. We're still going to work out those totals, but we'll have updates on that. Light snow again on Tuesday, and again, I'm only forecasting a high of 30 tomorrow. I'm trending on the lower, on the colder side of the guidance. We may push that up to 32 uh, based on some of the latest guidance, but I don't think we're going to hit the mid-30s to upper 30s like some other sources are reporting. I'm just not seeing that around here. I, I don't think that's what's going to happen. And my gut tells me it's going to be an, an icy mess because of it. All right. And then the rest of the week, we start a pretty good cool down. And then I don't have time to cover it, but we've got another snowstorm that could be moving in on Sunday. And this one looks like it has the potential to be big too. Too early to talk about any accumulations. Let's get through this one first. But let me just say this. I do believe that we could see another accumulating snow event potentially on Sunday. The snow showers on Friday and Saturday don't look as big, but the accumulating snow possible for next Sunday, and we'll leave it at that. Go to southernindianaweather.com. You can get this seven-day forecast updated. You can also click on interactive radar, and you can check out our interactive radar and track the snow and sleet and all of that fun stuff as it moves in tomorrow. 
All right, that is it for tonight, folks. Again, an absolute mess on the way for us. I'll update this snow total map accordingly and keep Facebook updated. For Southern Indiana weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Start preparing now, folks, because uh, regardless of whether we get the snow or ice, it's going to be a mess. Okay, stay safe.